Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I actually got a new video idea for Amulet. So, guys, this video is in celebration of getting 10,000 views on an Amulet short I did a long time ago called Where is Amulet Book 9? Um, so, in, in celebration of 10,000 views, I will try to, I will now be listing the top nine most powerful characters in Amulet from least power to least powerful to most powerful. These days, a lot of power scaling videos of different characters in like the DC universe, Star Wars, Marvel universe, all these superheroes everywhere and all these universes has been becoming popular. So I thought, why don't we do one for Amulet? It would be really fun. Now, I only came up with nine characters because I don't think there's enough characters. And I didn't want to use people that were non stone keepers because they would power scale really low compared to uh, the stone keepers on this list. Also, those stone keepers that lost their, those four stone keepers that lost their powers, um, you know, at, like there's like those stone keepers that lost their powers uh, on that night, you know, those four stone keepers, those won't be included. Um, also, there's a stone keeper described in Amulet Book 7, which turned into like a big giant fire monster thing. I won't be including him either. I'll be including characters that we can understand are probably powerful and we can actually scale these characters. So first, at number nine, is a Guardian Council member. Now, um, a Guardian Council member is, you know... A uh, stonekeeper who is part of the council, the top five uh, most powerful or most wise stonekeepers of any given time. Um, any guardian council member could probably range from like, uh, probably like uh, city level to small city level to big city level and like destruction level or creation level, I guess. You could say so a guardian council member is... Um, probably very powerful, but the characters listed on this list are extremely much more powerful than one regular Guardian Council member has shown as you'll go on. Um, so there's not really much to say about a Guardian Council member. Well, at number eight, we have Luger. And Luger is probably one of the first villains outlined um, in the series. Uh, Luger is supposed to be Trellis's like brother or half brother. I'm not, I don't remember. I haven't read the series in a while. I just kind of remember these characters. Um, so Luger, we can understand is probably very powerful because um, he, he fights uh, Emily um, and Emily is very inexperienced at the, this time, but he himself has, at the time of uh, book two has been said to uh, been more powerful than Trellis. And also Trellis is pretty inexperienced, but Luger is very powerful with the stone. Um, his main feat though, is really just his battle with Emily. And he does end up losing his powers and letting the stone take control of him. Um, so he is probably going to be listed and under many of the characters in this book um, as being number eight. But don't get me wrong, Luger is very powerful. Um, so let me just get a shot of Luger quickly and let me find one. Uh, where is he? Here, Luger. Um, so that's number eight. Um, number seven, we have a character from Amulet Book 8, who are a character introduced in Amulet Book 8, named Mose. And Mose is uh, Emily's son. Um, now, he's pretty young. Uh, let me find where he is. He's pretty young at the time of Amulet Book 8, and we, he doesn't really have that much power scaling. But as we will get into eventually in this video, he is the son of Emily, 
And so he has to be at least somewhat powerful in being a stone keeper. So I list him now at seven, but he could be much higher than a lot of these characters. But we haven't seen much from him yet, so uh, probably never will. There's only one more book, obviously, coming out. Uh, but Mose, I think, is number seven right now. Uh, he's an amulet of book eight. He's the son of Emily, so he must be somewhat powerful. Um, yeah. Um, not much to go over here. If you guys ever have, like, want to discuss this in the comments, you know, whatever, then uh, I'll probably make a short, you know, asking who's the most powerful amulet member. Amulet Stonekeeper. And you guys can answer in the comments. Uh, at number six, we have Sales. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Kazu, please tell me. And come out with Amulet Book 9 while you're doing so. Um, so, Sales is the grandfather of Emily. He held the stone that Emily has and is probably one of the most powerful stone keepers ever for the stone that Emily and sales wields is pink and most stones are green and blue. So I think that his stone is much more powerful than, um, than Emily's. And so sales is described to, uh, be somewhat powerful. You know, he could, influenced the council to do certain things. He knew a lot about the stone and its power and how they needed to destroy the mother stone and how um, there was a lot of bad effects a, the stone could have. And he actually understood the limits of his power. He probably had contact with I. Cole, but that's a theory I literally just came off. That just came out of the top of my head just now. Um, he probably had contact with Eichel, just like Emily has in the later books, and he recognized the power of the stone and probably the danger of the shadows um, which lie uh, in the series as well. So, Sales, we don't know much about his feats, but I can guess that he's probably scales very high, um, probably higher than some of the characters that are higher on the list, but we never saw him young. But we can guess he's pretty powerful. Um, so we have sales. Um, next we have Max. Now Max is funny because he is, most of the times we see Max, he's kind of just like a young illusion that's being held together by Icole. Um, after he made a deal with Icole, who is the, like the stone realmer, I don't know. Um... And Max is powerful. Uh, he was able to kind of control the stone and have a lot of feats of, of power um, in book five and six, where in book six, he's finally defeated. Um, but <clears throat> ultimately, <clears throat> sorry, Max is uh, stated to be one of the most powerful um, members of Um, the stone as he was able to easily overpower these two bully stone keepers. Uh, he can tap into the stone's power as seen that his eyes are blue and he is cat. He was able to withstand Emily and Vigo's stone powers <clears throat> at the same time. Um, but he was eventually defeated. Uh, I don't, I don't want to find where that is because I have to flip around, but Max is extremely powerful, although he was being controlled by an illusion. And I think Max never really reached his full potential. So he has to go under Vigo, um, and Vigo is number four. Now Vigo is probably very powerful, um, he and Max, when they were kids, were said to have been the best performing students. Um, Vigo, even in his old age, which he is in most of the Amulet series, um, has shown feats of strength and wisdom. And so I think his experience and his tactician 
his tactics of fighting and his wisdom kind of play into how powerful he is, making him the fourth most powerful character in the entire uh, series so far. Um, I could scale him above Trellis, although he is shown in his old age. Maybe a prime Vigo could have uh, probably beaten Trellis, although um, we don't really know because we've never seen him in his prime, and I don't think Vigo reached his full potential either necessarily. I think he was very close because he was on the Guardian Council, um, but I think he uh, was never really reached his potential either. So we have him at number four. At number three, we have um, I. Cole, and I. Cole is... I think could scale higher than Trellis who has the number two position. Although we've only seen glimpses of his power and he must also be very powerful because he is basically the embodiment of the stone itself. He is the, 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 the essence of the stone. Um, so he could probably be interchangeable with Trellis. Uh, I think he probably is more powerful than Trellis. But I'm really basing this. Oh, sorry. I'm really basing this off of what I've seen from feats in in the amulet book. Um, Icol is definitely very powerful. Um, for he obviously, I said this. He's the embodiment of the stone. Uh, let me just flip through the amulet book so you can see a few nice photos and artwork of amulet stuff. Um, Icol was able to influence the entire el the entirety of the elf civilization and convince them that he was their king but and he made an illusion of himself that looked powerful for a long time even that feat itself is very great although when Emily took off the mask he acted like he was in this state of weakness and so i could actually scale him lower than emily ultimately um here Icole is somewhat defeated um and it when when he's finally revealed as like just just some weak illusion it's like Icole says that they fear you now as they feared me and it was very easy for emily just to crash through the um, elf kingdom and just get to Eichel. So Eichel definitely scales under Emily. Um, but I think he can go above Trellis because he is the embodiment of uh, the stone itself. Um, so that's it. And then at number two, we have Trellis. Um, Trellis has shown feats. Um, and I think Trellis is not, again, never going to reach his full potential. Um, I think many of the Stone Keepers have, don't, are never really going to reach their full potential. I think Trellis will come extremely close, or might, he might reach it later than he could have, uh, because he is controlled by Eichel, which is the Elf King, and brainwashed, and all these things happen to him that kind of hold him back from becoming as powerful as he could be in the as being a stone keeper. And so I feel that Trellis is the second most powerful and he could have reached his full potential, but he didn't. Um, and so, yeah, um, definitely second. Uh, a more in-depth analysis will be given. Um, and lastly, we have Emily. At first place. Now, I think I've done a video where I said how powerful is Emily, uh, and I did go pretty in depth. But for a summary, because this video is getting really long, when Emily was a new stonekeeper, a new one, like completely new, didn't know what the hell was going on. She was like, what the hell is this? Well, she was able to kill a shadow, okay? I mean, she was raging. But she was able to kill a shadow. Okay. You know how powerful that is? Huh? 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 She was able to kill a freaking shadow. Like this. And she still kept control of her stone. Then in the second book, she was able to fight the stone's power herself and battle Luger 
at the same time, okay? A Luger that had lost control of his stone and was extremely unhinged and not holding back. Now, in the fourth book, Emily doesn't really have that big of a feat. What she does, though, is she does kill a bunch of these idiots uh, all at the same time, um, which is pretty big of a feat. Um, in books five and six, she seems like she gets weaker. Uh, she doesn't have that many feats. I think Trellis has more feats in these books, and so does Max. But then Emily... Emily becomes relevant again in book seven. Um, and I feel like between book six and seven, she actually matures a lot. But I think Emily doesn't have too many feats in book uh, seven either, although she is seeming to be very powerful as she becomes one of the most powerful paragons of like evil, although Eichel is able to control her. But then in book eight, Emily, like, I don't know what happens. She just, just she just exponentially grows in power. First, she breaks out of her Phoenix Force thing. Then she just randomly learns how to fly, um, controlling the stone midway. Like, she, she turns into, like, Supergirl, you know? And at this point... Emily is very easy to scale per first because she's the main character and so she has the most feats. But at this point, Emily has become at least continental level, okay? Very quickly, continental or possibly multi-continental level because she's able to fly and she acts like Supergirl and she c takes control of the stone. She casually destroys the entire elf army without even trying. And because I know she destroyed a shadow in the first book when she was like eight years old or something. I don't know how old she was. Um, and she casually just like does all this stuff. And, and then at the end, she just like decides she's going to fly to the moon and fight the shadows or do whatever she wants to do. And by her son, she's stated to be, become one of the greatest stone keepers of all time okay if not the greatest because she is the main character of the book series amulet so i think she actually has to be the greatest um when she's old she fights eichel and do is able to stand against eichel in her old age here but i don't think this is a r real reflection of emily it's just some like a memory she puts up um You see, just know that you have a significant life ahead of you. You will be one of the greatest stone keepers to ever live. Um, yeah, Emily is powerful. Um, she probably is more, twice as powerful or three times as powerful as Trellis. And she would smack down everyone else on this list. Amul Amul Book 8 Amulet is, is two, is like very powerful okay that's all i have to say make sure to like and subscribe if you like this analysis please comment who you think are the most powerful amulet characters bye bye